Yeah, hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial where I show you the details of how to use text to spreadsheet. I'm Matthias and I want to go with you through a simple sample project. The project that you can, that you can see here is actually a template I downloaded from pond5.com. So thanks a lot at this point to Pond5 for providing it. Let's take a quick look. It's essentially just a basic text animation because I wanted it to keep simple uh, such that it's easy for you to follow. Just here's some basic texts. And now let's say we want to modify these texts and we do not want to modify them directly inside of After Effects, but let's say we want to send these texts in a convenient spreadsheet format to our client such that he can review and modify the text however he likes without the need to touch After Effects. So we start text to spreadsheet. Once it's installed, you find it here in the window menu. It's below the recording region, but be believe me here, you have a text to spreadsheet. And it's looking like this. You have a basic export and a basic import tab. And in the export, I just say for entire project make spreadsheet. Now, depending on uh, what uh, spreadsheet application you want to use, you can either export a CSV format or an XML format. And I recommend to use the XML for Excel or OpenOffice because this also supports some nice color coding. If you want to use it with Apple Numbers or any other spreadsheet aware application, you can also use the CSV comma separated value format. So for now, I just say here client review dot XML and click on save. Now it says result added four texts to spreadsheet. Now let's open this text, uh, this spreadsheet in OpenOffice. Okay, here I'm now in the spreadsheet application of OpenOffice. And again, you can do the same with any uh, spreadsheet application. If you don't have any installed, I recommend to download completely free OpenOffice uh, from this URL here. So, and now we say file open and choose the XML file that we exported. And here it is now loaded. And you can see the XML file is really simple. Let me just reformat it here a bit. Um, you can see we have first a uh, column where each text has an ID. So they are just numbers. This is text number one, text number two, text number three, and so on. And then we have our text. And now it's very easy to change this text. Let's say, for example, in the project, this text should not uh, be named translation, but rather localization. So all we do is we just say save. And we definitely want to keep the current format. So stick to the XML format. And now we can go to After Effects. And in After Effects, we go to the Import tab and say for the entire spreadsheet, uh, entire project, load a spreadsheet. Choose again our client review. And now it says wrote status information into the following file. So it just appended to the original client review name here this status thing. And now it gives me an in depth. Uh, result of what happened. So first it says no errors, which is good, no warnings, which is also good. And then it says, okay, I didn't replace the text in this particular layer because the texts were identical. I also didn't uh, replace the text with ID number three, the one with ID number four, but I replaced the text with ID number two. And this is pretty useful to check. Uh, so you always know exactly what is going on if you are interested in the detail, what has exactly changed and what has not. Um, if we now check our project here, you can see this first text now says localization instead of translation and all the remaining texts of the project stayed exactly identical. So a real convenient way to update your texts. Now, if you have lots of texts, it's really good if you apply these changes to know what exactly is going on. And this is this status file that you, by the way, get by enabling this checkbox here that was written after your import. So let's go back to OpenOffice, which we have here. This is our original file. And now let's open the status file that was generated by uh, the import. If we open this, you can see it's exactly the same uh, thing. Let me just click here on the lines to or make them actually a bit larger. You can see here this color coding. And this color coding is such that green texts were up actually updated. So you can immediately see just from the color coding that only this text here, uh, only this text localization was actually changed. And it also says replaced in layer one of composition text one. 
So this is pretty nice. So if you get like a table back with hundred of texts, you can immediately see uh, from your client and you apply the changes, you can immediately see, ah, only this particular text changed. So I have to take a look at composition text one, whether everything still looks nice. And for all the yellow ones, you don't need to care. There can also be something, some red lines if something really bad has happened. Like for example, you have texts here in your spreadsheet that you don't have um, in your project anymore or something like this. Yeah? But in general, this is just like a copy of your original spreadsheet that with this text information and the color coding gives you uh, in an intuitive way to check what exactly changed in your project after you applied the changes. Now, if you need to do something like translating your projects into many different languages, it is not so handy to have one XML file or one spreadsheet for each individual language, but it's much better to keep all the versions in one spreadsheet. And you can do this easily by adding additional columns. So let's rename here our first column, which is currently named original text to English. And then we add another one, German. And I just enter here some German translations. So, und importiere sie wieder, Lokalisierung, exportiere Texte einfach, Kundenreview. So now I save my file, file, save, and let's import this again in After Effects. So in our project, we again go to the import tab of text or spreadsheet and say, load entire project from spreadsheet. Again, I choose the client review file. And now text to spreadsheet has detected that there are two different columns, English and German. And it asks me for which column should the text be taken? And I say German, click OK. Again, the status file is written. And here again, you can check what exactly happened. In this case, all four texts have been replaced. And if we take a look at the RAM preview, you can see that now the new texts are updated. If you now want to go back to the English version, all you need to do is import the spreadsheet a second time. This time choose the English texts. Status information is again written. Here you get in-depth status information. And we are back to the English version. Now let's take a look at the advanced options that text to spreadsheet offers for exporting your texts. If you choose this checkbox here, you can see there are some more advanced uh, options revealed. And uh, the first one here is about uh, text that already have an ID. And for, th for this, you first need to understand how text to spreadsheet is internally working. In particular, how these numbers in the spreadsheet here, this ID one, two, three, four, how they are working. So when text to spreadsheet imports uh, such a spreadsheet, it knows, for example, that this text uh, localization has ID number two and and import them again has ID number one. Uh, so, but wh why does it know to which text in your After Effects project they belong? Well, this works as follows. Um, if we take a look at the, at the composition here with this text layer that actually has this uh, localization text here, uh, and we take a look at its layer comment by going here, right click on this uh, area columns and choose here comment. Now you can see the comments are visible and here's one comment annotated that says hashtag XML text IDs two. And this means this text corresponds in my stretch spreadsheet to the text with ID number two. If your text would have several keyframes, so the text would change over time, would you would have more IDs here. Like if you have three keyframes, you would have three IDs here and also then three rows in the spreadsheet. Okay, this is a pretty handy thing, having these IDs, because it means that the tool is not relying at all at your uh, project structure. In other words, it doesn't remember, oh, the text localization is placed in the text one composition inside this or that folder and it's layer number one or something like this, but it just has annotated at your layer uh, this ID, which means if you start changing your project, like let's say we take this layer and move it to a different composition, the annotated ID moves with it and still 
uh, the tool knows exactly where your text belongs. So this makes it very robust. The only question that happens is if we exported it before and now we export it a second round, what should happen with texts that already have um, such an ID annotated? He has three options, either to preserve the existing IDs. And this is pretty convenient if you just want to like update an existing spreadsheet by just adding new texts, but the old ones should keep their original ID. So, or replace, which means get every text a fresh idea uh, ID to be saved. This is great, for example, if you've taken, uh, if you've created a new project and used, reused parts of, let's say, five other projects in them. And from these five other projects, maybe in these five other projects, you also used text to spreadsheet. So you have IDs from these five different earlier projects that you reused in your texts here. And this might mess things up a bit. And you say, I want to start fresh. Please generate me a completely new uh, spreadsheet with new IDs. Then you just go to replace. And the skip option is what I want to show you now. This is pretty handy if you say, I, for example, want to add a new text. And I only want to create a spreadsheet for the new text that I haven't created so far. Let's say here at the very end, at this point, we do not just want to have here uh, the logo. But our client requests, please put here the text text to spreadsheet next to the logo or something like this. So we can go to this composition, add a new text here, like this. Let's check how this is looking in our main composition. Okay, maybe I should make it a bit bigger like this. Let's keep it simple for now. And now let's say, okay, we already translated our text into 10 different languages. We do not want to create a completely new table. We just want to create a table with this new text here. So we say, uh, create a new spreadsheet that where we skip existing IDs. So this is the only text that has no ID annotated yet because it was not yet exported before. It's a new text. Yeah, so we say, make spreadsheet and call this one new texts only. And now you can see as a result, just one text was added to the spreadsheet. And now you can see we have here just text ID number five, text to spreadsheet. And the great thing is we can just copy this now from here, copy, go to our existing project where we already have English and German variants and just paste it, edit, paste. And now if needed, we can start translating this one too. In this case, text to spreadsheet will be the same in English and German. So I just copy it to here. And so easy, we can even update our spreadsheet with new texts. So now let's take a look at the other options. The spreadsheet column label that you specify here is just when you export your text to the spreadsheet, what in the spreadsheet is written here, original text. You are free to rename this later, but if you have want to have here something else like English, for example, you can also enter it already here. Avoid duplicates means if you have several texts that are exactly identical. So let's say we have another text layer here that also says text to spreadsheet, like this. Uh, now, uh, if you have this not checked, you will get two separate entries in your spreadsheet. If you have avoid duplicates checked, it will notice, ah, this text and this text are exactly identical. So they will get exactly, so, so they will get the same ID and will belong to the same um, entry in your spreadsheet. Then finally, you have this exclude option here, this one. If you enable it, you can filter to either exclude or limit uh, your processing only to certain text layers. Yeah? So let's say, for example, we have here uh, some layers that we do not want uh, to include. So let's say, for example, we add here a text mamoworld.com and call it website like this. And then you can say something like exclude Neas whose name uh, starts with website. And then you can say case sensitive. So then if I write here website, it will 
uh, not excluded if you say case sensitive, but it will exclude it uh, if you say I don't care about whether it's uppercase or lowercase written like this. If you want to exclude more than one such layer, then you can also do something like uh, say I write here no change or something and then I call this here website no change. And then I say whenever it contains the part no change it will be ignored in the spreadsheet. Uh, or maybe it's even clearer to say no no spreadsheet. And then we write here no spreadsheet and then it will be ignored by the website. Alternatively you can also explicitly mark the ones that should show up in the template. So by saying for example only process layers whose name contains uh, in spreadsheet and then whenever I like some s add here something like in spreadsheet and the brackets are really optional like this then it knows ah here this name contains a part in spreadsheet so this one will show up in the spreadsheet whereas another one does not show up. Uh, in addition to the starts with, ends with and contains there's also matches reg apps, reg exp, which is really powerful. Uh, if you want to know more about this uh, search on the web for regular expressions, in particular regular expressions in JavaScript, here I just want to give one uh, example. So if you for example want to say I want to um, either process all layers that contain spreadsheet or template, you can just write it like this, spreadsheet or template. So it's like a combination. Now if you find either this text or this text in the layer name it will process it. And you can write way more complex patterns here um, but uh, really for this look for regex and uh, in the uh, web and then you will find nice examples how complex regular expressions you can write here. Okay one final uh, note is that uh, instead of processing the entire project you can also just process a selected folder. This uh, is like another filter that is not acting on the layer name as we do here, but just say in your project you select a folder like this one and then say text the spreadsheet, uh, make spreadsheet. And then if you have the option selected folder only, then it will only consider comps that are located in this folder or subfolders within this folder. Okay, that's it from my side. I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the tool text to spreadsheet and I hope that it will help you in your text workflows in After Effects.